want to say that those kinds of questions are the kinds of questions we should start talking with each other about. And I hope as a result of some of the openness that you've shared with us that we will start having more conversations. So I'm going to sit down, let you answer whichever questions you want for five minutes. Sure. Then I'm going to make announcements and give people direction. Thank awesome. you again. Cool. All right. Buckle your seat belts. We're going to try to speed through, ball through as much of these as possible. How do we deal with healing the internalized hatred of people of color? I think that people of color, um, we need to prioritize ourselves, that we need to have black spaces that are black or whatever your group is, or just people of color spaces. Um, yes, that is scary to white people sometimes, but it has been the way it's been for a long time. Y'all have had y'all spaces. We need ours so we can heal, so we can encourage each other, so we can be understood, and then we'll come back. Don't worry, we're not going away forever, but we do need to have those spaces and white people who want an ally can help us protect those spaces because anytime we get together, they literally will kill us for doing it. And so what we need is people who are willing to put their bodies in the line and stand up and surround us and protect us and make sure that we can have space. Make sure that if they need childcare that you can provide it. Make sure if they need water that you can provide it. Make sure that you show up and protect the spaces that we need so that we can be healthy, so we can take care of ourselves, and so that we all can do community together. Um, and I'll also be in the back answering questions as well. Uh, should we teach young students about these social hierarchies? And I'll combine this with the, the question about the seventh graders. I think that it's important to teach kids as in whatever language they can understand about all of these things. Um, my mom, uh, who was a feminist before I even knew feminism had a term, uh, she was showing me, was like, no, I don't want to be called Mrs. I was like, well, why is that? She was like, because men don't have an honorarium that's attached to whether or not they're married. I was like, well, mom, that's just so extra. <laughs> <laughs> but at three years old, I was learning about the social hierarchies and how women were being treated differently than men. And it was in a, done in a way that I could get even if I didn't apply it right then. Set the seed, teach the kids, they'll learn as you go. They may not respond to it, they may not use the language right away, but I'm finding more and more that kids, as they come out at younger ages, as they self-identify with their gender at younger ages, that we need to meet them where they are. And so if they're using the slurs, they're ready to have these conversations, again, in language that, that they understand. Um, see, you're part of evangelicals for social action. That's a really good question. Um, I was a part of Willow Creek for about nine years. Willow Creek is a very large, uh, some would call it a mega church. Um, it's affiliated or it's associated, I should say, with evangelicalism. Evangelicalism is kind of a, a nebulous term that's out there for me. It's not necessarily something that I've used for myself. Um, I am committed to seeing evangelicals, especially after the last election, make better choices. Um, whatever that means, but, that, but again, it's not about me telling you who to vote for. It's about me making sure that you're honoring the image of God in every person with the choices that you make. Again, that I'm pushing evangelicals to honor the image of God in every person with the choices that you make. And so when I'm holding people to a standard, that standard is all about honoring the image of God in people. If you want to learn more about that particular piece, uh, uh, Sharon Lisa Harper has a book called The Very Good Gospel. Check that out. Um, why do you think youth don't have a word in these kind of issues? Actually, kind of issues, I like that. How do you think youth can make their voice heard? What I love is that movements throughout history have actually been led by youth. I mean, even the biblical stories, like we have youth who are in those stories. We don't tell the youth part because we don't want to, you know, inspire youth to go out and change the world. But very literally, these things happen in the hands of youth. I've read a quote from uh, Black Youth Project, BYP 100. I'm too old to be in BYP. Like, it is a youth-led project. And so what I don't want you to do is think that this is all for older people who have time to do this. No. Use your social media. 
Get on your Snapchat. Do whatever you have to do. Use your voice. Get your friends involved. Teach them about it. Take something you heard here and put it on your Facebook status or whatever. But whatever you do, you have influence. And so I don't want you to think that you have to wait. I don't want you to think that you have to have somebody's permission. You are the most capable of changing the world. So go do it. How can I be a better advocate? And this is as a, um, I think this is a really good one, and I'm glad that they named it. They are queer, ca Caucasian, trans woman. Um, what we need to do is show up with our identities to know that as a Caucasian or a white person, that there's some things that you can do on behalf of other um, women of color, especially trans women of color. Say her name, that hashtag that, that went viral. Um, a lot of people didn't hear about it until um, the young woman uh, in Charleston was hit. But Say Her Name was a movement started for and by women who have been killed repeatedly. And some people were like, well, why can't we include her? And it was like, because white women get news coverage. Trans women get misgendered and not covered, or it's talked about a man was killed in a dress. No, we need, we need to say her name because we need to help other people know what's happening as there's been, uh, I, I'm not sure if anybody has the current numbers, like 20 trans people have been killed this year. And the numbers keep going up weekly. We have to say her name. So finding ways that you can come alongside other um, minority groups or other, uh, really shouldn't even say minority, I should say other uh, groups who have been marginalized or left out of the, the center, um, show up wherever you can, however you can. Um, I wonder if you're willing to add a category. Yes, uh, size. There's lots of categories that are not in there. There's lots of ways we could name um, everything. There's, it's, a, it's really an infinite kind of, of thing of the social categories and the hierarchies. But what we can do, and I'm, I'm way over time, what we can do um, is, again, as you name things and as you begin to talk about it, talk about yourself. Talk about the ways that you benefit. Find out. And if you don't know, ask somebody. I'm sure they'll tell you. <laughs> but we, we do need to figure out what, what our stuff is so that we can come into these conversations compassionately rather than defensively. It's okay that you have a privilege. Just use it. Last one. Uh, what are things that uh, white folks should keep in mind when seeking to join in PLC as allies? We talked a little bit uh, about that. Um, as allies, um, if you occupy a white identity, if you are often raced as white, because none of us are technically a race, there's systems and laws that gave us a race. Like many of us, especially people who are white in this country, weren't white when they got here. You were Italian, or you were Irish, or you were German, and you were also persecuted until you became white, and then you were okay. <laughs> so knowing Knowing that part, knowing that there's a history that's worked for and against you in certain ways, and there's histories that worked for and against us certain ways, learn those histories, get some knowledge about these things, and look and see who's teaching it. And if it's another white guy, no offense, I have, white, I have great white friends. <laughs> but if it's another white guy, you need another teacher. Because we've heard that. And it's great that they know it. It's important that they know it. But we need to expand that, that, that narrative. We need to learn from some other sources. There's lots out there. Don't feel defeated. We can get it all done. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to give your cards to people uh, on the way out. Um, Darren, we really appreciate you. I kind of wish you could move, we could get you to move here. But I know you already said you love Chicago. Um, okay. Um, we have sponsors at tables with information to share. And there is a group that we left out. And I, I want to acknowledge um, at the next one, uh, Trans Ohio will be here. And uh, Melissa Alexander is here and she has a card and can share that. And um, apologize for that oversight. Invite you to stay and have refreshments, and thank you for coming.